Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Great Big Plugin Show, brought to you by PureMix.net. Today we're talking about replacing drums, and it's going to be pretty amazing. We have a very exciting New Year's gift for you. So um, today we're going to talk about UVI's Drum Replacer plugin, and I think it's the best drum replacement piece of software that I've ever seen, and goes way above and beyond for what you would expect. So uh, before we dive in, I have to do all of the usual, please hit the subscribe buttons and all that stuff. So ring the bells, uh, click the thumbs and do the things that you do. Um, okay, so UVI drum replacer, let's dig in. So I've got their website pulled up here and uh, it's gonna look like a lot of information from the, from the start. There's so many options built into this thing and honestly, when you get into all of the features of it, it almost feels like a, another workstation in and of itself. Uh, but with that comes amazing results. So we're going to check out the website. And I want to just tell everybody, if you're a PureMix member, you get this included in our plugin subscription bundle. Uh, just for being a member, you get access to a bunch of plugins. And you can find that if you log into PureMix with your username. And if you're an active subscriber, you just go up to there, hit profile and then you'll hit plugins and services on the left. And this is all of the amazing stuff that you get with your PureMix subscription. So all of these plugins are uh, free for you guys to use for as long as you're a PureMix subscriber. So UVI Drum Replacer is our newest addition and we're so happy to add them to the suite because this thing's amazing. Let's check out the site. At the top, intelligent drum triggering, machine learning based analysis with real-time component separation and triggering. Machine learning, guys. I've been waiting so long to use this clip. The CPU, CPU is enrolled in the processor, processor a learning computer. computer. Inside of a drum replacer plugin. It's going to be amazing. Okay, uh, so going down, here's the interface. We're going to see a lot of that in the next, you know, hour or so, 30 minutes, hour or so. It's going to take a minute to get through this. Down here, you can see that you can replace a pineapple with any drum that you want. Pretty cool. And... Uh, down below, there's going to be some mixer features. We might just jump over to the plugin. This section, um, this is the learning computer machine learning portion of it. And that is one of the things that makes this plugin extremely unique. So we're going to check that out in just a moment. There's all kinds of analysis stuff, blah, blah, blah. We're going to talk about all this. So I'm just going to jump over to Pro Tools and we'll dig in. Okay. So here I am over in Pro Tools. I've got Drum Replacer pulled up. And uh, what I've done to kind of start out here, I've got a drum loop loaded up in the session. I've got another drum loop that's just a fill. And then I've got some drums from a band that I recently worked with named The Broken Relics. Uh, amazing drummer in this band. But I've got a bunch of their multi-track stuff pulled in so that we can try it out on some real drums as well. So... Uh, I think to start off with, it might be best if we do the traditional example and pull it up on an entire drum kit and then um, and see what it does kind of, you know, in the usual, like I've got a drum kit and my snare, you know, I want to replace my snare for whatever reason or my kick and all of that. So we'll do that. Uh, good to see you guys in the chat. Adrian, six of one. We got JC who is crying because he just bought it for Christmas. Don't cry. It's all good. At least you got it twice. Um, okay. So yeah, let's start off with the traditional example of just replacing some drums over on the drum kit here. So I'm going to play you guys a little bit of what's already here. I'm going to close drum replacer. Here's the regular kit. And here we go. And hold on. Here we go. The drummer, Zach, we call him Potsy, is a machine, uh, so super solid drummer, and the drums sound pretty cool. I'm, I was actually very happy with this, um, these sounds that we got, but we're going to play around with it anyway. So let's jump in, and we'll just go to the snare, and I've got a snare top and a snare bottom here. They're already kind of blended. There's a little EQ on them, but I'm just going to throw a drum replacer around it anyway. And you have the option of doing mono or mono stereo. If you're working with stereo samples, you want to do mono stereo. 
I'm going to do that just in case we decide to do mono stereo. And all right, so here's our interface. Now, unfortunately, I can't make the UI of this interface any bigger than what it is. So I'm sorry if you guys are squinting and uh, for any kind of bummer on, um, oh, I guess I could, no, that doesn't work for you guys. Uh, yeah, sorry for any bummers on the screen share. But okay, so when we dive in here, we've got a general like waveform view in this section here. Down below, we have what's called the part section. And you'll see that there's eight different parts. We'll come back to that in a minute. Going up here, we have the detection section. To the right of that, we have what's called the separation section, which is going to make this plugin extremely unique. And then below that, we've got monitoring. So to start off, let's just solo up our snare here. And again, I've got snare top, snare bottom. Those guys are routed into a routing folder, which you guys can think of as an aux. I've got drum replacer strapped across it. And here is our snare sound to start off with. which is cool, but we're gonna make it cooler. So if I uh, just wanna do the traditional thing here, I can go into Drum Replacer Essential Sounds, which are included with it, and we could go find a snare that might be cool. Uh, so let's see, we've got our friend over at Mixbus TV, David, and David has added some samples that come with the plugin. So let's see what we got here, Power Room SD, and we'll just drag this guy over onto the part section. And let's see what happens here. So our green line up here is gonna be our detection threshold. So when we lower that, we wanna lower it so that the snares are peaking above it and it's gonna then trigger our replacement sound. So I'm gonna hit play and then slowly bring this down. And that is the loudest sample on planet Earth. So I'm going to just lower down this fader. Sorry for anybody that just got zapped. Uh, stand by. Here we go. Okay, so uh, there we go. Simple drum replacement. And now we're going to work with uh, trying to make this a little bit more interesting. So as you can hear, like the snare that was recorded, wildly different snare than what that power room thing is. Um, that probably isn't the sample that we would choose, but I want to take a second to show you something really, really cool inside of the parts section. So that is next to tuning. We have this amazing little ear, which is awesome. Oh, Luke says the zoom works. Zoom in. That's working for you guys? If that's working, let me know. It's messing up my uh, little stream thing over here, but if that works, we'll keep it. Uh, okay, so um, I'm gonna hit this little ear here, and this is gonna be really hard for me to manage, but we'll work on it. So I hit the ear, and right now it's listening for input. So when I hit play here, it is going to listen for the pitch of the sound. Okay, so you can hear that it pitched it up by two semitones, which is super handy. This is my favorite thing about um, the detection portion of this plugin is that it will tune your samples to your original sound, which is going to make for a much more natural sound when you blend it in with what's going on in your overhead and your rooms and all of that stuff. So in this case, it listened to it and it said, I'm going to turn that pitch it up by 2.1 semitones. So Let's bypass drum replacer, listen to the snare, and then we'll bring in the, the sample again. Here we go. Okay, now that thing is ridiculously loud. So that brings us to the next, <laughs> yes, it's definitely bigger. Thanks, Luke. Uh, so that brings us to the next portion of the part window here. And over here on the right, we've got this layout, which is our eight different parts. And then below that, we have a mixer page. 
So in this case, the sample's ridiculously loud, so I'm gonna grab the fader and just turn it down. And we'll blend it up and in. Here we go. Now, as a reminder, if I didn't tune it, here's what we would have. And, and if we just listen to our uh, dry sound, we'll, uh, we'll mute this guy. Bringing in the wet. So now I'll just tune it again. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so we can get our, our tuning done. Now, they added a new feature recently, which is called the Ducker, which has this amazing little duck. I'll try and zoom in on him. I don't think you guys can see that. I don't know. I don't know if the zoom's working, but with the ducker, I can pull that down and I can make it duck the original sound on our entire drum track. So here's that. So basically that would be very useful in a loop uh, kind of situation if you wanted the trigger to duck the overall dry signal. In this case, um, I don't really like the sample very much, so we're going to find something else that might be cooler. Now, another really fun feature on this uh, is that we can actually use VSTs and different software instruments to trigger our sounds. So over here, if I want to clear out a sound, I can just hit this X button here. And then up in the browser window, which you can hide and show by hitting the folder icon, I'm going to click on the little plugin thing here. And then this is showing me all of the available software instruments on my system. I went through and I added a favorite. So if I click on this little star button here, I get the option to load up complete control. So I'm going to do that. And then over here, I'll open on, I'll hit open plugin. And then in all instruments, I'm going to go just with a, a fairly safe one called uh, the Abbey Road 60s drummer will load up the early kit full. And I think we're in here. So I'm just going to put this over here. And then now I've got this little keyboard and I need to assign that to the proper note, which is going to be D in this case. And I'm going to take the dry sound all the way down so that we're just listening to the sample. Let's check this out. Okay, so that happened, and inside of the kit it sounds like this. Kind of not great, but uh, maybe we'll find a different sound. Um, before we do that, though, let's actually start looking at some of the machine learning, the uh, Terminator feeling machine learning stuff. And I'm going to take the files and we're going to find a little bit of a better drum sound for this so we'll go up to the root here i'm going to go to my favorites i've saved my sample folder in here so i'll double click that and then i have a really cool daring king uh drummer from mute math if you're not familiar with daring king he's awesome i have a cool sample pack from him we'll try and find something um that might be all right we'll just grab this guy real quick Big fatty. All right. Um, so let's solo up our snare. And I want to show you guys the separation section of this. So basically, what uh, Drum Replacer is going to do is it's going to listen to the incoming signal. And then it's going to take all of the information that it sees and separate it out among different, um, basically like frequency bands. But it's going to try and dissect what it gets from bleed. So like the hi-hat versus the snare versus the kick. And then it's going to let you actually clean up the gate signal by turning some of those on and off. So I'll hit play here and we'll take a listen. 
And when I hit play, I'm going to tell it to learn the signal. So use its machine brain. Here we go. All right, cool. So now that it's learned that signal, what we can do is we can monitor effectively the side chain of the drum trigger. So I'm going to hit this monitor button and it's going to be listening to the incoming source. And then as I turn these on and off, we're going to be listening to different combinations of portions of the signal. So just to start off, we're just going to listen to number one. I'm going to turn off everything but number one and let's see what it's listening to. Cool. So there's the snare. As a reminder, this is the full signal. And then we can turn some of these things off. And let's just go around and listen to all the different parts that it, you know, kind of separated out for us. So there's our kick. Hi-hat. Nothing. Important part here is uh, the R in the middle means residual. So this is everything else that it didn't separate into one of those five circles. And what I heard was that our snare is on one and two. So now let's listen to that. Yeah, awesome. And as a reminder, we started here. So that's a really easy way to clean up your trigger sound and just get the drum that you want to get to, to replace on it. Pretty awesome. Um, there's a question from Spiel Zimmer in the chat, and he says, with uh, the snare you use, each hit is relatively equally loud. Does the UVI have the possibility to adjust the volume to different loud snare hits? Yes, it has some velocity settings, and we're going to check that out in a minute. On this particular track, the uh, the drummer was going for a loop feel, and we can see some dynamic if we look at like the snap, the snare top waveform here. Um, but he is again, he's kind of a machine, and he is pretty consistent overall. So we're not going to see a lot on this example, but I will show you guys an example with a drum fill where there's some really fast snare roll stuff, and I'm going to show you how this can kind of tweak in and make it sound really, really natural, which is awesome. So let's uh, let's try and hone in a good sample here. And right now, over in the, the mixer section, I have the wet sound and the dry sound. And the wet is muted, and I just have the dry up. So I'm going to take down the dry all the way, and we're just going to use our sample. And over in the, tech, the detection section here, or sorry, in the part section, there's a couple more things I want to tune you into. So we're going to tune this sample in a second, but I want to talk about polyphony. Basically, when polyphony is set to one, this is a monophonic sampler, meaning uh, it's only going to play back one sample at a, at a time. And if your drum sample has a tail on it, uh, let's say that the part was a little bit faster than just doing the backbeat on two and four, your tail lasted longer than that, it would just replay the sample. It wouldn't layer them together. So you would end up hearing the tail of the room get cut off with the transient of the next sample. To make things sound a little bit more natural, you can increase that, and we'll put it up the max is five, so that means it'll play that sample five times before muting one of them to play another one back, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's done, and now I'm gonna play it, and then I'm gonna tune the sample. If you remember, the, the one that I just pulled up was super big and fat. Uh, it might not blend in well with the overheads, for example. So actually, let's check that out. So let me still have the overheads and the sample before tuning. I had the monitor button turned on. Here we go. So our original sample is obviously tuned much lower. So let's uh, let's hit the tune button. Here we go.
Okay, that is really, really high and might just not be a good fit for this, uh, for this track, but inside of the overhead. Okay, it's also much louder, right? So when I brought the dry up, we heard how much louder that sample is. So below the tuning section, we have a really cool button called Gain Match. So we're gonna tell it to do that. Here we go. So now it's more in line with what our original uh, snare level was, which is nice. And let me turn the snare up for you guys a little bit. And let's go through and we'll see uh, some other features here. So um, to the left of this polyphony tune gain match section that we just covered, there's a delay option here. So delay is useful if you feel like the snare is either triggering late or early compared to what your original sound was. And this is extremely important, especially in the loop example that I'm gonna show you in a minute. Um, you have to really kind of play with this to make sure that you don't kill the groove of the track. And one thing I've noticed, and this could just be my system with hardware latency that I have going on with my, you know, random craziness that's in this room, but um, I noticed that when I commit a track, it is more accurate than my playback when I'm monitoring with it live on. Um, that's not a UVI thing. I think that's a me thing. But uh, with this delay option, you can actually slide the sample forward and backward in time if you feel like it's triggering late or early. Uh, so that's that's super handy. And below that, we have our standard envelope controls. So we've got attack, hold, decay. That's very useful if you need to kind of smooth things out, smooth out transients, or um, play around with how those samples are actually playing back for you. So let's go ahead and let's see what we got with this sample now. We'll check that out inside of the drum kit here. So it's pretty cool. And again, we could just either, you know, uh, in practical case, what I would probably do is I would make like a new audio track with this. I'd get my sample working. Then I'd probably commit it and get my blend going of the two. But we can do a lot inside of the actual plugin if we want to. And that includes adding more plugins on top of it like you would inside of a DAW. But I'm not going to go there. Um, let's bring up our dry signal with the sample. Yeah, so you can kind of hear how that would go together. Now, one other use case that um, I saw, UVI actually has a wonderful tutorial of this plugin uh, on their YouTube channel. So that's something to check out if you really want to dive in further. Uh, but one thing that they brought up that is kind of neat is you could technically use that separation function as a gate of sorts, right? You know, if you just found, for example, here, let me, uh, I'll make this guy inactive. We'll bring up another drum replacer instance here. And then I'm going to use the machine learning uh, to get rid of like hi-hat bleed on it, for example. So let me solo up our snare and let's check it out. Okay, so it's going to be kind of artifacty, and it sounds like you've pulled out other portions of the signal, which you have. But 
wouldn't that be nice for a side chain on a gate? So there's all kinds of practical uses for the separation function that they have going on inside of this outside of sampling, which is really, really cool. Um, it's a super powerful plugin, which is, which is really great. Uh, okay, let's move on to our kick drum. We'll just see what else we get here. We'll, we'll try and like ruin the Broken Relic song uh, and see if we can't make a really funny kick drum. All right, so here's our kick drum soloed up. Not a ton of bleed or anything. It's a good sound, but let's just make it a funny sound. So we'll go drum replacer. I'll do mono stereo just in case I do something with uh, some reverb on it. And how about if we do a plug-in and we take their awesome indie rock song and we give it a little low-end bump from our friend Drum Lab. So I'm going to hit my favorites button, open up Native Instruments, get complete control involved here, and we'll open the plugin. And then we'll use a little drum lab. I'm going to come up here. Let's say we want a kick drum. And we'll go with something funny. Uh, maybe a kick sub seems like it's not going to work out great, but we'll find out. All right. And let's find out. I'm going to bring down the green line for the threshold. All right, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> I'm kidding, but uh, all right. So let's let's check this out. So here's a really good example over in this part browser where we see the blue line and the red line. So um, let me check a note here. I had to write it down for myself, but the um, the blue waveform is the sample, and the red is the dry signal. So we can kind of tell like where things are are happening as a result of that. That means I can take the delay and I can move it around to kind of get my sample more in phase. I also have a uh, polarity invert button up here if I need to flip that over. And we have the open plugin button. We talked about that. We could also flip left and right, I believe. And you got the normalize option. So we'll, uh, we'll play with this a little bit. And because it's a VST, I can't use their original attack hold uh, sustain decay guy. Um, so I can do that over in my plugin. So we'll bring the decay down on this crazy kick drum. Let's see what we get. Yeah, so here's a really useful case for reinforcement, right? Like I'm adding a little bit of sub information onto my kick drum. It's not the crazy electronic thing that I had in the beginning. I've, you know, used this VST to bring in another kick drum that I, you know, adjusted the attack and hold time on, and now I've got a little bit of reinforcement happening. So super cool for that as well. All right, uh, we're going to move over to a loop example that I have. 
And while I'm doing that, you guys can feel free to get your questions going in the chat. I'm watching over on the chat here, and we'll uh, we'll play around with that. So let's see. Uh, JC says, can you link the wet dry so you can slide them together? That's a great, great question that we're going to find out the answer to right now. Uh, that would be the master output. And I believe that's the audition from our browser. So I don't think so. I don't think there's a master out on this. Uh, I think you would just have to play around. Oh, here you go. If you hold down shift, you can move both of these in conjunction with each other. So I hope that answers your question, JC. So there's no actual fader. It's just uh, holding down shift to do that. And I don't think this is working, but this is the guy. I can't tell if you guys can see that or not, but the, uh, the duck is the slider to the left that you were thinking of by somatic. Um, or sorry, uh, Studio 6. Yeah, you guys can see it, great. Okay, so Isomatic says, this plugin would be cool to use to trigger vocal chops and other non-percussive sounds with a beat, or vice versa, triggering drum sounds over a synth arp. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so let's play with that in a second. I'm gonna show you guys these drum loop things, and then we'll move on, we'll try something crazy like that. All right, so back at the beginning, I have this drum loop. And I thought in a production, it would be a pretty you know, typical move to do like an AM filter on that, and then like a regular drum kit would come in, right? So I basically took that loop, duplicated it five times, four times, and I brought in samples for a kick, a snare, a clap, and a hat. So if we listen to that sample, here's with the filter on it. I went through and extracted the kick using the machine learning thing. Here's our kick that I used. And then with my filtered loop, Then I added the snare to it. So here's just the snare. Got to have that clap. Here's our clap. And then the question from earlier about hi-hats. So I brought in a hi-hat sound and we're gonna have to play with some things and see if we can get this feeling natural, but here's what happened. So uh, I'm gonna monitor our whole input side chain and using the separation, I got this. As a reminder, this is the entire input signal. sounds the reason that it sounds crazy is because I'm using the high pass filter to get rid of all the low end so if I bring that out so I'm just trying to get it down to as much of the hat as I can here's what we got and with a hi-hat sample Now that sounds a little bit crazy, right? Uh, it doesn't sound like it's quite hitting right. The velocity is very robotic, like uh, the T800 is just trying to play a hi-hat, but it doesn't really have that built in. Um, so what we have next is this max velocity bar. So I'm gonna play with moving that up and down and see if we can get a velocity curve between that and our actual velocity curve to make for a more natural sounding hi-hat. Because if we just listen to our samples right now, this is an important concept here. Um, that might be obvious for, for a lot of people, but uh, groove is extremely built around the dynamics that a player plays with, right? Like if I bring myself down on some of those in between and I'm putting my accent in a certain place, that has a whole different feel than if I'm just a robot smacking the hi-hat or whatever. So 
Let's play around and see if we can get something natural. Here's before we do that with all the samples. Doesn't feel great, especially if we compare that to this. It's a little, a little, uh, you know, not great. All right, so let's play around with our velocity curve here. So that's gonna be our red line. And we'll see what happens when I bring this all the way down. All right, so now we're starting to get some of those accents feeling a little bit more separated. There's a little bit more play between them. Let's play around with the velocity curve and see if we can make it more natural. So not great compared to the original one, but it's starting to get a little bit more natural on it. And with some tweaking, I could probably get it in the ballpark. Um, and one of you guys might even know that there's a really easy way to do it. Uh, Jimmy R says, also, is there a way to export the MIDI for each instance to deconstruct the kit MIDI style? I am not sure if there is. I was actually looking for this earlier. Um, and that was because I'm not sure what this download button does on the separation curve here, or over on this section. This is the guy, if you guys can't see it. This is what I'm looking at, and I haven't looked that up yet. So if anybody knows, please let us know in the chat. All right, let me back up here. And let's see what we got if we check out all of our added pieces and the original drum loop. Yeah, so it might not be like completely replacing the original hi-hat, but it's kind of got a groove to it too, and it might be something that inspires something else, and it was all derived from one loop, which is cool. Uh, that hi-hat, I was using the um, Complete Control again, just the Abbey Road 60s drummer, just to generate that hi-hat sound, so kind of a fun one. Um, you know, and any plugin that you have, just like, uh, who was just saying that? That was, um, Isomatic was just saying, you could trigger vocal chops or other non-percussive sounds with a beat. Absolutely, like if you have a certain synth or whatever, you could get it to always play a certain note on the snare or whatever. There's so many options in here because you can load in your plugins um, without having to do a bunch of MIDI exporting and all that stuff. Uh, just load in your plugin and then assign your note and you're good. So pretty cool. Uh, you can also change your MIDI channel over in this section if you guys didn't see it before. So there's all your MIDI uh, MIDI controls there. Hopefully that helps with the zoom. All right, crazy 4K screen and all. All right, so the next thing that I had um, to kind of play around with, uh, how good could the triggering get? 
and basically I don't see a case where this couldn't um, this couldn't do whatever you would need it to do but I have this fill loop that I brought in and I wanted to see if I could take all of the pieces from the fill and then replace them with different samples so here's what the loop sounds like which is actually a great sounding loop it's awesome just what if you wanted more control uh, okay so here is the kick which he just hits at the end. So if I was just reinforcing the kick, it would be original with my Abbey Road kick. And let's see, obviously the snare is gonna be the hardest part here because we've got a little bit of a roll at the beginning of it. So let's check that out, here we go. Cool. So we nailed that uh, that intro roll there, and some of the things that I played with to do that were the, uh, the gate time, sorry, the gate time up top, and obviously like the re-trigger time, the release of that, the inhibition. One thing that you can do that I really like inside of the detection portion is you can turn on click. So when you do that, it'll do a click every time it would trigger a sample. That sounds like this. So when it does it with the, with the actual sample. If I mute the sample, this is what you would hear. And that's a useful thing if you're trying to really dial in stuff like this. If you just turn on the click, you're not distracted by the decay of a room sample or anything like that. You can just listen to where exactly are those trigger points happening. Um, lots to learn here, and I would recommend, like, do check out UVI's tutorial. They're very thorough, and, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, they have some tips about like tweaking the gate times and all that, but really this is just kind of a thing of like, you need to understand each parameter, then tweak it around until you're getting the result that you want. And this was also another one, if we monitor this, um, this fill, this is what we started with. Sorry, let me turn off the click here and I'll turn off our high pass filter. And then, I just use the second little circle here for the snare. And that ended up giving us our final result. Cool, and through my little bit of tweaking there, I just brought back the tom at the very end of it. Um, but let's see if we can get the tom now. So here's our friend Tom. And this is our entire sample replaced fill. With the original loop. And here's our original loop one more time. with our added samples. And I'd have to play around to get rid of that, that last you know, snare sample that triggered on the tom hit because I was just playing around with it a little bit. But you get the idea. This is a very, very versatile replacement program. And it's doing a lot more than just saying, like, set your threshold and hope for the best. Um, there's so much involved in here. And again, we have eight different parts that we can add onto a sound. So you could load up something that's just doing room and just doing like your bottom snare, for example. Um, all of that's possible, which is really, really fun. Uh, I'm curious, actually, I, it just reminded me of, um, there's a plugin from uh, our friends at Wave Machine, or Wave Factory, I'm sorry, called Snare Buzz, and it would be really interesting to uh, load Snare Buzz on there and see what it did. Um, so that's, that's the whole thing. If you guys have questions, let me know over in the chat here. I'm going to check out... Um, Primetime asks, there's no groove shuffle adjustment. So groove shuffle... I think that you're going to be playing with that mostly um, from your delay portion. So if you move this forward in time or back in time, let me uh, let me zoom in just in case you guys can't tell what's going on there. So let me go up a little bit. Okay, so with this delay portion, you can change where the sample 
happens based on the input trigger. So uh, if I wanted to lay the snare back more than the input was, I could actually delay this back in time or forward in time and get the feel that I want to. So that's one way that you could kind of do that. Um, is there a way to export MIDI? Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, six of one, this will go great with my OCD. Just kidding, of course, but looks like so much fun. I know I could burn a few hours times 10 messing with that. Yeah, absolutely. This thing is really, really fun. Um, Jimmy R, can slate trigger files be imported? That's a great question. Uh, I don't have any slate trigger files. I don't believe. Is that true? Let me see. It would be inside of my samples. I have a trigger two library. Let's find out. Let's find out. If I go to one of these kicks here, I don't see any files inside of that. So I'm thinking no, but I'm not sure on that. Uh, I would consult with the website. That seems kind of odd if it wouldn't. So I, I, could, I don't want to speak wrong here. Uh, compatibility. Let me just look and see if there's anything on the site that says, oh yeah, slate trigger. Because trigger is going to show up a couple times. No, I don't see anything offhand. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not possible though. Please uh, do check the manual on that. And I guess let me know. Put a comment in this video after the stream if you find out. That'd be really useful. All right. Uh, yeah, and again, uh, David over at Mixbus TV has a great tutorial on this. Great place to check as well for more information on it. But yeah, unless uh, we have some more questions, I think that is Drum Replacer. So I hope you, you guys dig it. And um, again, if you are a Pure Mix Pro member, you have that included with your account. I'll show you guys how to do that one more time before we get out of here. Uh, so let me go back to my browser. And... You would go up to, once you're logged in at PureMix, you would just go up to the circle with your name, go to profile, click on plugins and services, and then you can get your serial number right here along with the instructions on how to get that plugin. So you just need to download the UVI portal and then enter your serial code with it and you can download and install it. So again, if you're a PureMix Pro member, that is included with your subscription. Have fun. Uh, lots of cool samples on there as well. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today and a uh, reminder to hit the like and subscribe buttons and all that stuff. Um, greatly appreciate you guys hanging out. It's been a blast and I hope you like this thing as much as I do. Uh, with that being said, do you guys have any plugins that you want to see on the next show? Let me know in the chat if you do and uh, we'll check those out. So next uh, Monday, we're going to be back with another Mix Tank Live. The Monday after that, I'll be doing another great plugin show. So you can let me know what plugin you'd want to watch or uh, learn more about. Uh, Studio Dude One says I switched to this from Drunk Gog a long time ago. I wish I did, or I wish it came with more samples though. Yeah, definitely. Um, let the UVI team know that too. Uh, Drum Gog was really great. That's that's the one that I had forever ago. You know, I had Slate Trigger as well, but um, Drum Gog was really cool. It was a good one. Awesome. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. If you guys have questions or uh, want to see any particular plugins, let me know in the comments below, and I'll check that before our next stream. Otherwise, I will see you guys next Monday for another Mixed Tanks Live, and in two weeks for the next episode of The Great Plugin Show. See ya.